Welcome back to our Tactical Thursday episode. This week, we are talking about the skills that you need to land your first analytics job. So I'm gonna pose this question to you, Don David. What skills do you need to land your first analytics job? Well, I have a very unsexy answer. Let's hear it. And I think that you should learn Excel. Like that should be ground zero because whether you like it or not, Excel is the most prevalent tool for data analysis Mm -hmm. across, I think, just about every industry. Right. Um, Because it bridges the gap between those who are technical and those who are non-technical. So if you know Excel, then you can start to communicate with those who are not in the technical space. So I would say that's ground zero. And then I would advise, and I may be biased because I started off my career as a data visualization specialist, but I would say data visualization. Because, and I've actually kind of thought through this, I think data visualization gives you the best return on investment in terms of how much time you spend to how impressive you know, that specific skill looks on your resume. Because mm-hmm. you can learn Power BI or Tableau within a week and actually be functional. Right. And that can actually change a whole department if they start visualizing their data. And you can very quickly pick off some very low hanging fruit and say, here's a $50,000 insight that I just found. Yeah, I think visualizations are very impressive and I think you're right, you can easily show people who are not as technical, I mean, for lack of a better word, it is a visualization, so you can easily show them what's going on with Right, it's like you're making picture books. Yeah. It's like you're treating everyone like little kids. I mean, isn't it fun to see those <laughs> graphs and stuff and play with the numbers? I think that's great. And I'm it's not like even not a tech hard. person, yeah. Yeah, it's not hard to actually implement on that too, which is the shocking fact. Mm-hmm. Um, Then, you know, depending, I would say beyond Excel and data visualization, it gets a little dicey because if you are a business analyst, I wouldn't recommend that you learn a bunch of coding languages. But if you're wanting to become an aspiring data scientist, for sure you need to learn Python or R or, you know, probably a whole different stack of coding languages. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right on that one. And I also would say, and we've talked about this a little bit too, is Think through what type of analyst you want to be and if there is an industry that you're most interested in. Let's say it's marketing, let's say it's sales, let's say you know it's supply chain, and go and look at the job descriptions and see what right. they're requiring and see what tools would be fruitful for you to learn, what technical skills would be the ones that you would learn. And you can easily figure that out because you're going to see the same technical skills, the same tools listed over and over again. And when you see that, that's a clue to say to yourself, okay, I probably should learn that. Right. I think that is, that's a great way of giving a more concrete answer to something we can't nail down the specifics of. So just go, we've given you some homework, go find three of your ideal jobs that you would like to have, go down to the skills section and learn everything that's in all three of those. Right. And I think that that's an easy way for you to see what's out there in the marketplace, what they're looking for, and for you to start matching your skills with the experience that they're requiring, the tools that they're requiring. I also want to talk about soft skills, though, because... I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, because I think that that's important, too, in today's business world. You need to be able to work on a team. You need to have analytical abilities and skills. You need to be able to communicate. And this isn't something that I'm just saying. I actually did my homework on this one, and you wrote an article about this recently, about the skills that you need that are soft skills. And the Journal of Innovative Education did a study of a bunch of different entry-level jobs and came up with these three, the communication, analytical abilities, and ability to work on a team as the ones that are most highly sought for analyst roles. And I think that makes sense. I mean, if you can't communicate out your message, who's going to know what to do with the data? Who's going to think it's important? If you can't work on a team, you're not going to get anything done. And if you can't approach a problem with that analytical ability, I mean, that's essentially what we're asking you to do as an analyst, right? Yeah, it's funny because I think those three skills are the ones that are most readily easily to interpret Mm. from the hiring manager's perspective. Mm. Like, oh, this person is a pain in the ass. I would not want to work on a team with them. Mm. Or, yeah, I don't understand the story they're telling me. It's, It's incoherent. Or, yeah, they said that they had these skills, but there was no, they didn't tell a narrative that actually showed that they had problem solving ability. Right. So I, I think these soft skills are very much devalued, especially from those trying to get their first analytics job or pivot into the analytics space. Everyone seems to say hard skills, hard skills, hard skills. And you know what? I've actually got a theory about this. Okay. Um, 
So we're on YouTube. And, well, if you're listening to the podcast, we are we're also going to post a video on YouTube with this episode. I have gotten into this rabbit hole of debunking fake gurus. Okay. So I think what it is, it's kind of plugging into that snake oil salesman. Uh, people can sell you courses to teach you hard skills. Got it. But it's not actually, and it's funny because I'm like outing myself here because I sell courses. But I will say this, it's easier to sell a course on Power BI or Tableau or Excel versus a course on how to work in a team. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to commoditize that. And I think that's why that people are overvaluing hard skills and undervaluing soft skills. Because mm. it's not as easy to, to like quickly, you can't check that box. Right. Yeah, I think it's a little more nebulous um, and maybe not even as sexy, too, if we right. really think about it. It's not like you can go onto your resume and be like, look at all these great tech skills I have. You sort of have to be able to show on your resume that you can do these soft skills through your bullet points. And then by virtue of your interview, that's when you're going to be showing your ability to a hiring manager to communicate and to tell stories and maybe even a story about you working on a team or solving a problem. That's where you're going to show your analytical abilities. Yeah, well, I would say that it is sexy. Critical thinking ability is sexy if you understand the right frame or branding process. Because I, I, And it's funny because I'm like starting to get better at this because mm -hmm. now I'm pitching clients and I have three years worth of experience of wins. And I can be like, oh yeah, you know, I, I created this system that five, a five, found a $5 million under optimization in the pricing strategy. That is a sexy story. Mm -hmm. But that speaks to my problem solving ability. So I found that I found out in the marketplace, okay, well, what are the triggers for them buying? F found that, then did some analysis across all different, 17 different assortments, and then created, create like an analysis that found every single opportunity where they are not optimized on their pricing strategy. So I think that's a great example of being able to tell the story, tell the narrative around your critical thinking abilities, and you have the experience to back it up, and you have those quantities that you can really showcase to somebody, to a client, or if you're looking for a job, to a hiring manager. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. And so maybe we reframe this as being a little bit cool if you're able to back it up with some stories that show the impact. And I mean, essentially, that's what we're telling you to do in an interview anyway. Well, yeah. Show your impact. It's <laughs> hard, though, when you're trying to get your first job. Sure. Because you don't have... You could say, I, I took a college class where I got an A, but... Sure. I mean, that's like, good girl, good boy. Right. But if you get the question in an interview about, tell me about a time when you worked on a team, this is fraud for you to talk about your team workabilities. And what you need to do is frame it in a narrative, use the STAR method, situation, task, action, result, frame the situation and task that you're faced with, so the problem talk about the action, and then what was the result of that action. And if you do it that way, that not only showcases your ability to work on a team, which is the story they've asked for, but your ability to communicate. And in some ways, that's kind of sexy because you show impact. You're gonna show like, this is the impact that I had, this is the result that happened. Well, it's funny because um, we haven't, I, I've, I've written a script that I haven't actually posted yet. Okay. That was like, don't be a tool and that was going to be the intro to the video. It was going to be like a promo video. <laughs> and then it was going to cut to music and then say specialist. Because uh, like... Oh, that's funny. It, when you talk about it in supply and demand terms, certifications, people who've taken courses, there is a plethora. A hundred, probably a half million people have taken analytics courses. Mm -hmm. But I would say a very sparse amount of people in the analytics space have huge wins and can communicate those effectively. Mm 